too good thinking. Now, Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Look at somebody boldly and say, you must be spiritual. Come on, say it like you may say, you must be spiritual. Come on, threaten them, say, you must be spiritual. You have to get out of the flesh. Amen. I want to talk to you today about your spiritual side. You know, we all had a dark side. We all had a down side. We all have our good side. But there is a side to us called your spiritual side. And many of us don't concentrate on our spiritual side. That's why when it's time to meet God, you're late. They that, um, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, and he said, you know, Jesus told him, you must be born again. And he said, you know, they that are born of the Spirit are like the wind. You don't know where they're coming, nor where they're going. Many people in the body of Christ are predictable. They'll come to church and you know exactly what they're going to do when they get to church. They will not be attending to God. They will be attending to other things until others attend to God. Because they're not thinking that they're spiritual. Many times they think that they're just church folk. But look at somebody in front of them and say, you must be spiritual. You, must be spiritual. you know, they, they have an epidemic, forgive me for using this, this kind of word, they have this epidemic in society where people, they say, well, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. Okay, yeah, right. You think you're spiritual. God is a spirit. How much do you act like God? To be spiritual, you have to act like God. Not just because you, you watch Casper and Twilight and all those other ghostly movies. I mean, that's not ghostly movies. But go there. Go there, John chapter 4, verse 24. Y'all still here? Amen. Look at somebody. I'm going to need your help because we've got to finish in a certain amount of time today. Look at somebody and say, you must be spiritual. You have to be spiritual. You have to be spiritual. Get out the flesh as fast as possible and get into the spirit. Only three of you have no strength to say that. <laughs> it's going to help you and I if we find out that we are spiritual. When you are a sinner, you were not spiritual. You are a carnal animal. Amen. Jesus in John 4, 24 says this. God is a spirit. Say louder. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him, where at? In spirit. In spirit and in truth. So if God is a spirit, then I must worship him in spirit, then I have to go where he is. I cannot successfully worship God as a natural person. Even though that woman bowed down to Jesus and worshipped him and Jesus sent the word and her daughter was healed, we don't necessarily have to do that. We have to go further. It's easy for you to bow down on the ground and lay before God and fake like you're worshiping. But Jesus says we must now worship in spirit. We have to get where God is and worship him there. It's easy for you and I to fake God out. Yeah. Sure. We can bow our knees, prostrate on the ground, and say, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. And he'll do just like he did to Joshua. He said, get up. What you crying for? Wow. Yeah. So your posture, those in, excuse me for saying it with broken English, your posture doesn't guarantee you an audience with God. Amen. Right. If that was the case, all of those... Uh, People in all the different religions that are bowing down, believing that they're praying to God, he would answer each and every one of them. Yes. So it's not postulization. Yes. Is, that, is that good English? It's, you have to be in the spirit. So I have to be in the spirit. Yes. Romans 8, 16 says this, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You were not born a child of God. Right. You were born again a child of God. 
And if the Spirit of God is not telling you that you're a child of God, then you are not a child of God. There are a lot of people in the world that believe that they are children of God. Who is telling them that? Something is telling them that, but it might not be the Spirit of God telling them that. Now, anybody ever stole something? Don't lift your hands because we know we all still out of this still to rehab. <laughs> Let's keep one, kid. You left me already? Okay, go ahead now. I need to rest because you wait for a quick service. Now, if you ever stole something, and this old lady saw you. And you didn't think anybody was there. And they put you on trial. And they said, there any witnesses? And this, this woman lifts her hand and she happens to be the mother of the judge. Everybody will go, whatever she says is true. Nobody here. The spirit bears witness that you're a children of God. If you got to convince yourself you're a child of God, you're in trouble. By now, the witness should be proven to you that you're a child of God. And how would the Spirit prove it? By making sure you act like God. I have a daughter. Her name is Sydney. And one thing my wife does, and you know, and, and my, what's my wife's name? My wife, her name is Sydney Mothers. One thing my wife does when she is trying to describe Sydney is this. Sydney smiles just like her father. She says that almost all the time. Sydney's smile bears witness that she is my child. When you and I get in the spirit, we bear witness that we are God's child. When you stay out of the spirit, you're bearing witness you're a child of the devil. Well, I shouldn't say that. That's not fair. You're just in the flesh. You know, because you can still be saved and not pleasing to God. Just because you're saved don't mean you're pleasing to God. Just because you're married, don't make your marriage as happy. I'm going to help me three of you. Go to 2 Corinthians. Verse 6 through 8. 15, 18. Somebody say this. I say, I must. Come on, say it. Help me. Three of you. I must get into the Spirit. Now, the problem with charismatic Pentecostal churches, they think speaking in tongues is getting in the Spirit. No, that's speaking in tongues. You may build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost, but getting in the Spirit has nothing to do with the gifts of the Spirit. Getting in the Spirit has everything to do with the fruit of the Spirit and denying the law of the Word of God. If you can successfully deny the law that's written in here, if you can successfully deny this law and do the, uh, or have the fruit of the Spirit manifest, then you're in the Spirit. You can cast out devils and not be in the Spirit. You can speak in other tongues and not be in the Spirit. You're just being used by a gift of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. But to be in the spirit, the fruit is manifested. All right, all right, all right. Oh, help me pray, That's why you can cast out devils, pastor a church, and go to hell. But you can't go to hell full of love. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. They won't let you in. That's right. And what happens is because, you know, they're going to look at it early, in a few minutes. They that are led by the Spirit, many people think that man, if you're being led by the gifts of the Spirit, you're a child of God. No. To be led by the Spirit is to be led by the, the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit. And many of us as believers in charismatic Pentecostal churches, we fail at living in the Spirit. Because we want to shake a shotgun and preach for preacher. But we don't want them to live in the live right. 
We don't want to exercise temperance, patience, meekness, goodness, kindness, love, faith. We don't want to do that. We want to pray for people. Instead of showing an act of kindness, we want to cast the devil out of somebody that stepped on our foot. I got to go. I'm out of here. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Y'all hear? Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. So not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killer, but the Spirit giveth life. Now, you need to stay with me for a second, because many of us, if not all of us, have learned wrong. Somebody say, I've learned some things wrong. But I'm going to learn something right right now. See, it says the letter killer. The letter means the rules and regulations that God has given in the Bible that kill it. Yes, amen. But the Spirit giveth life. Yes, amen. See, it is important for you to recognize the difference between the, the letter and the Spirit is the difference between grace and works. Well, well works and faith or grace and law. So when you're Walking in the spirit, you're not following rules and regulations to be right with God. Amen. Which is a great challenge to most believers because most believers are making so many mistakes they're trying to catch up. Amen. Amen. You ever went to school and they gave you a makeup exam? Yeah. God don't give you makeup exams. Hallelujah. If you blew it, you ask for forgiveness, it don't count against you. Amen. But because our natural our natural propensity for penance, yes. we think if we made a mistake, we have to make up for it. No, yes. you don't. Because yes. if you're trying to make up for it, that's law, that's yes. legalism. Yes. You're going to be killed for that. Yes. Yes. Because God paid for your sins. Yes. And if you think you can pay for it, you're going to oppose God and he's going to remove his grace from your life. Yes. 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 See, it's a hard thing for you and I because many of us are not obedient. So what we do is we try to play catch up with God. Don't play catch up. Yes. Just stand still and let God deliver you. Yes. Amen. Amen. For we, look what it says. For the spirit, for the letter killer, but the spirit give of life. But if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be what? Done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? I'm preaching fast because you're going to learn how to talk or listen quicker. Because the world's going to end and you have to get it ready to quick to get there. So my service is going to end at a certain time today. You guys catch up to me. I'm going to end on time. I'm back to this. I'm going to go. Now watch this. Look at what it says. It says, if the glory of the Moses ministry was done away with. How much more glory the ministry of the Holy Ghost would be. Amen. Moses, when he went to get the letter, the word, the Ten Commandments that will kill them if they make a mistake. The glory that was on Moses was so bright, he had to put a veil on his face. Y'all remember this story. And it says that that glory was done away with. See, many of us want to beat people with the word of God. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, and people when they hear that, they be like, I don't want to hear anymore what the Bible says. I want to know what God says. Because the letter kill it. But the spirit gives life. Amen. Because you can have a verse that gets your enemy off your back, but it might not be God's will. That's right. Wow. All right, let me keep going. Verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Ready? Now the Lord, somebody say we say the Lord. The Lord is that spirit. It's that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is living. Yes. Amen. See, the whole key is this. Uh, the opposing thing was either you had the law or you had the Lord. Yes. 
Either you had the letter that was going to kill you, or you're going to have the Lord, the Spirit that was going to bring you liberty. Yes, amen. Okay, three people amen. say, I need the Lord. I need the, Lord. I need the Spirit of God that's going to bring me liberty. Now we're talking about being in the Spirit. Somebody say, I need to be in the Spirit. Now let's read that. Let's read. Let's go there one more time. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. Y'all getting anything? Yeah. See, because I, listen, I care, but I'm going to say I don't care, but I really do care. But if you don't care about your spiritual walk, you're not going to survive. Amen. There are so many religious people that are better than you. Amen. They can dot their eyes better than you can. They can cross their teeth much better than you can. You cannot compete with the average religious person. Yes, that's right. So it would behoove you that God made spiritual yes. to be spiritual. Yes. If God said, I want you to be mine, be his. Amen. Yes. Amen. Some of you ain't good at it. You ain't, you're not even good at sinning. Jesus. You couldn't even sin on time. Jesus. Somebody asked you to be somewhere. We're going to steal something at 6 o'clock. You show at 7. And the police are all there. I missed it. And now you're all born again, filled with the Spirit of God. And now you're going to start dotting your eyes and crossing your teeth. Stop playing. God called you to be spiritual. Say, I'm going to be the spiritual one. Now, we're not talking cardio, your heart. You know, your heart is, is, a, is a natural thing that keeps you alive and out of the issues of the heart, the mouth speak. You know, there's a spiritual side to your heart. But the bottom line is the real you is invisible. Just like God is invisible, the real you is invisible. The Bible many times doesn't even describe God. It just gives you a, a what's it called? I was going to say analogies. Is that the right word? Analogies. You know, they give you a, what's that other word? Meta, metaphors and analogies. You know, but Jesus said one thing we can trust God to be. Spirit. We know what God gave his name, his name gave his attributes and this and that. But Jesus told us one thing we can guarantee God is. What is it? Spirit. Spirit. Y'all so weak, man. Spirit. Spirit. Somebody said, you sound like you spirit. Say spirit. 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 Someone else better. Say spirit. Spirit. And you see, we're going we're gonna to learn how to get in the spirit and stay there. Amen. Jesus. Amen. The devil is a master at getting you back in the flesh. He can get you in the flesh without you even being convicted of it. Yes, that's right. Amen. I'm at church. Verse 15. Watch this. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their what? Heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord, say the Lord. The Lord, the Lord is that spirit. Yes. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. For we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Of the Lord. I like explaining verses. That's just what I believe God called me to do. You know, I was in the mirror, I mean, in the mirror in, in the, the bathroom, and I was trying to wash my face, and I was trying to wash my face with cold water. You know, cold water and soap don't lather. So it was coagulating. And it started to coagulate. Don't you know what coagulating yes, yeah, is? Yeah. It started to coagulate on my face. So I was beholding in the mirror my glory, and it never appeared. It never appeared. The soap began to appear. So I'm looking in the mirror trying to see myself. But soap kept appearing. See, the Bible says, we beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. It would change from image to image the glory of the Lord. If you do not stay in this mirror, you will never see you got coagulation on your face. You'll never see.
see what's wrong with you if you don't look in here. Preachers can tell you you're wrong, but that don't work. That don't help. Because once they shut up, so does the correction. But it's something about a mirror. Mirrors don't lie. I'm not the sexy old guy. I'm the penitentiary today. And it says, see, the spirit is the law. You have a choice. Either you're going to follow rules and regulations from the Old Testament, or you're going to follow the law. Who are you going to follow? Now watch this. It says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. When Moses opened up the word, they hid and ran. When we open up the word, we run into it to, dis to disappear. You ever want to read the Bible and something says you don't have time? So the devil saying, I want you to continue to look like me. Come on, help me. Somebody pray your six year old. You don't read, it's the devil telling you, come on, we look good and dirty like this. We don't, we don't need to look like God. Come on, where you going? Stop. Stop reading that. You know, you know. Amen. Now look at three people and say, I have to get out of the flesh to get into the spirit. Romans, go Romans chapter 8, verse 5. I have to keep going. You're going to catch up. Now, when you're talking about the flesh, you're dealing with certain issues of the flesh. And the main issue of the flesh are sins. Somebody say flesh. flesh. Equals sins. Equal sin. <laughs> this is, you know, I, I need to be nice here. Now, Cleo, can you come here for a second? Please, I need to bother, bother you. Now, his wife likes Cleo. Cleo was slim when he got married. And for real. And she fed him and she hugs his big stomach and you know she always tell him how much she loved him and all of him. Right? And you see, his car what they, what's what's the word car what's it car, car um no what they call flesh? What's the word? The Greek word? Cartage, cartage. Car car cartage. It's carnival, car car what's the word? Cartage. Whatever. The C word. <laughs> see his physical Carnage. 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 Yeah, well, whatever it is, well, this physical carnal nature, carnal or carnal exterior, is not sin. You hear me? It's dying because of sin. But it's not the, the sin that we're going to talk about. We're not talking about your physical body, but we're going to talk about what, wants, what, what comes off of that. Amen. That's what makes you want it. That's, that's what's going to have you die. Amen. It's what comes from the body of death. Yes. Your physical body is dying. It's Amen. filled with sin. It's filled with the devil's potential. Yes. And you have a choice. Yes. Either you get in the spirit and kill it, or you stay out of the spirit and it kills you. Yes. Yes. I don't want to lie. Now watch this in three languages, and you know, y'all gonna get this. Watch this, y'all. Some lady gonna get this. Y'all gonna say, y'all, I got it today. Well, you gonna get it today. See, you're dying. Amen. Either by choice yeah. or by nature. Yeah. Choose to kill yourself. Right. Now, for those of you that are watching this on television, they did not say suicide. That's right. That's right. You have the ability to kill your old nature, or should I say, keep it dead. Amen. Amen. All right, ready? Look, somebody say, I gotta get out of the flesh. <laughs> For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the recarnally minded is a happy time, right? Is that what it says? No. No, what's that? Yeah. For the recarnally minded is a happy time. Yeah. You're gonna go on the beach, lay in the sun, yeah. get some tan on your, your little bod, and before you know it, you yeah. see some more bods, and someone to jump on that other bod. That's what it says. Yeah. Because the car, nobody even read their Bible. Yeah, but the because the carnal say mind, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Enmity means enemy at war. Your natural born mind is at war with God. When you wake up in the morning, your thoughts are going to tell you, "Let's get God back." 
Why should we not do what we want? Let's, let's slickly get God back. He said fast, let's eat everything. Yeah. <laughs> and let's call other people and see if they got something to eat. Your carnal mind is at war with God. God said pray. No, let's watch television. Yeah. I couldn't wait to get that DVD. Not knowing that DVD could be replayed later. Wow. Amen. But the carnal mind won't tell you that because the carnal mind has to kill you. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. So we, we, we're some, all right, here we go. Anybody here know how to swim? I can't do a lot of analysis because I'm almost done. Yeah. Right. Here you go. You can swim really well, yeah. but you put on a lead jacket <laughs> and lead pants. Wow. In your mind, you know you can swim, but you forgot attached to your flesh is lead. And you say, oh, I just want to go for a, a lap in the pool. And you're going right down. Your body is laden with lead. Wow. Your body is dying and is trying to get you to help it die faster. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow. It's true whether you, want to, whether you want to admit it or not. Your body wants to die. It's, it's on course. It's dead. It's dying. The only thing that's keeping it going is the Holy Ghost within you. Right? Because the carnal mind is imminent against God, but it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now, if somebody was to say neither indeed can be, that means you cannot rehabilitate your flesh. You cannot rehabilitate your mind. Your carnal mind cannot be rehabilitated. What happens is when you got born again, you received another mind. Yes. And what happens is you renew your mind by the word of God so that your carnal mind doesn't have a lot to work with anymore. Because your carnal mind is the devil's mind. You can play with your mind if you want. You know, it's like, uh, it's just my opinion. No, it's not your opinion. Because your mind is the devil's mind. That's right. Come on, Somebody said I need to get in the spirit. I need to get in there quick. You can't play with spirits. You cannot play with them. You ever, anybody here ever thought bad about somebody? Did you have control over it? No, no. Once, the, once a thought comes, that's it. It's a wrap. Jesus said, take no thought. See, but if you had the spirit in you, when that thought was trying to come, then the, the Holy Ghost will break the power of that thought to land in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thought she liked me. What's that, what's that leper, the leper name? What was his name? The Syrian. What's his name? Naaman. I thought for sure he'd come out and say some moo -moo, moo moo stuff for me. Stuff goes in this carnal mind that's at war with God. And many times you think the thoughts of the devil and you make these bad decisions and God says, I can't help you. You thought that. Thank you, Pastor Richard's dad. I ain't mad at you. God's mad at you. A lot, of time. a lot of times you would feel funny towards me, and that's only God telling you you ain't right. Amen. And then you try to get my approval, and I'm gonna give it to you because I know what you're talking about. Amen. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you you're all right. <laughs> I don't know what you did to God. All right, I gotta go. Somebody said, they are, they are in the flesh. Can't please God. Can't please God. Now look at this. Because the common mind is in enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, even if he can't be, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See, if you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. Now, I have to be polite, and I have to be rude, and I have to be crude, and I have to be straight. If you're not in the spirit, you're not pleasing God. I can't, I can't be nice. The world's coming to an end. All the religions act better than you. And I can't leave you like that. Come on. All these religions 
no how to be kinder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They know how to feed the poor. Yeah. They know how to clothe the naked. They know how to yeah. do all that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Even welfare is doing better than you. <laughs> the welfare is better than most Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Preaching better than they shop. Yeah. Might as well have a whole bunch of family first cards in those seats. <laughs> So we're talking about being in the spirit. Say, I'm, in the, I'm getting in the spirit. In the spirit. Now let's get down to the, to yeah. the nitty-gritty. Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says this. There is therefore now, say no. No, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, this is an important three-letter word because most people like to uh, quote that to get you souped up, to make you think you're special and that nothing bad is going to happen to you. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. And you be like, huh? <laughs> Come on. People want to take a part of the verse just to zoom you up. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that walk not in the flesh, but are in the spirit. Now, if you're on the fence, but most of the time you tip toward the flesh. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. When was the last time you was in the spirit? We walking on the fence like this. <laughs> like, oh, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Why don't you just try the other side? So you don't have to ask for forgiveness every day. Amen. 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 Verse 11. You all hear So I said, I have to get this spirit. And you see, a lot of times we, we, we think that we shouldn't spend time in the spirit. Oh yes, you should. You can work on your job and still be in the spirit. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say you can work on your job and speak in tongues. That ain't gonna work. Uh, you know, you're a lawyer. And they say, well, well, what is your advice? Uh, you know, you so you can't be in the gifts and be productive, but you definitely can be in the fruit. Amen. See, a lot of Christians, they want to play ignorant. I'm trying to get out of here. Y'all talking about teach. What verse am I But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. See, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, you must have died. Amen. Glory. Amen. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta talk Amen. to you now. The Holy Ghost cannot live in a currently sinful body. Amen. He only moves into them that have died. By accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yes. And then the Holy Ghost is now the machine. Yes. Yes. Jesus. I can't slap dick in the Janet like I want to. Yes. Why not? Holy Ghost is in there. Yes. Yes. I don't even get a thought about, you know, elbow and Eugene. Yes. Right. <laughs> See, many of us, we, we minimize the fact that we have a responsibility to the Holy Ghost. Yes. You act like you, you're full of God. You ain't full of God. You're full of yourself. Yes. If you were full of God, you would be fully reliable. Yes. All right. All right. Somebody started calling a conversation. You still listening. You ain't full of God. You're full of, you're full of socialism. You might as well start a communist block in your church. Revolution. Man, we don't like the long pastor preaches. You got to slip on both. I gotta close because y'all mad at me again. 
Therefore, brethren, we are dead as not to the flesh. What's that four letter word? To live after the flesh. Come on. This is important. Watch this. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall what? Die. Die. But if ye through the Spirit do put to death or mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall what? Live. live. You got to hear this. Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So I can, I can say, they that live by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen. See, when you're led by the Spirit, you're living by the Spirit. Help me bring people that speak in English or Spanish, Portuguese, or even speak African. Do something. Help me. And said nothing about tongues. Said nothing about discerning the spirits. It said nothing about casting out devils. It said that if you if you live in the flesh, you're gonna die. But if you do the spirit, if you live in the spirit and you, you put to death the deeds of your flesh, you shall live. Amen. For those that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. To everyone in this place, we want to say that we are the children of God. We're the sons and daughters of God. When was the last time you verifiably lived in the spirit? To you, you've been relegated to gifts because you come from a Pentecostal uh, charismatic background. You think if I if I speak in Inkama Shakaras that then I'm in the spirit. No, you're Inkama Shakara. <laughs> I'm out of time. But it's important that you and I realize I have to get in the spirit and stay in Your kids get on your nerve. How they don't get on your nerve? Your nerves is in your flesh. I hate my boss, but you're still going to work, right? My devil, get out the flesh. Pastor Rich, out of time. Somebody get him up. You can come up here. Come on. I don't want to call him keyboard kid. Just have him come on. Anybody know what verse 7? For as many as led by the Spirit, they are what? The sons of God. Now go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Say, say, say it boldly. Say, I'm not going to live in the flesh. I'm not going to live in the flesh. I am going to live in the Spirit. Now, I don't know about you. I said something very, very profound. Anybody ever been to a doctor? All right, how about a dentist? You ever been to a dentist? And you go to get a cleaning? And, and, but then you got to get an extraction. And it's fine until they touch a nerve. Your fist boiled up and you look at the dentist like, what's wrong with you? Your nerves are in your flesh. When people are bothering you, you're in the flesh. I'm, going, I'm trying to help three of y'all. So if you ever get agitated, you are in the flesh. And you need to recognize, I need to get out of the flesh before I kill them. And I die too. That's me. You might be born, but guess what? You, you, you better learn this lesson because your time is running out. God is coming for his. If Jesus shows up looking for his, and you're all fleshed out, he's not going to take you. Amen. You know, can I, can I be honest with you? You know, you, you know anybody have a real job? Amen. Like, you have a job with bosses, like, you got a boss, anybody have a boss? And your boss can pick you or don't pick you? Amen. Say you're working hard at your desk, or say you just got your legs crossed and, ha, Facebook. <laughs> And your boss walks in, and your boss says, I need one person to pick, to give a bonus to right now. And you updating your OMGs. <laughs> you won't be picked. That's, right. That's how it is with God. God is going to and fro, looking for someone he can show himself strong on their behalf. But he's looking like, why are you still in the flesh? 
No way. Yeah. You could have done that. Uh, see, because just because this is what I think Ecclesiastes say, because judgment of a matter is not swiftly executed, the sons of men are bent on doing wrong. Just because you think you got away with it, because somebody didn't tell you you were wrong, it's still wrong, right. and God still will get you for it. God's gonna get you. God's gonna get you. <laughs> to, you hear me? Come on, get me out of here. <laughs> now watch this. This is what I'm trying to tell you. If you're going to live in the flesh, expect to die. Amen. But if you look, if you can't, man, I'm out of time. That's what I'm talking so fast. Look at me. You cannot get out of the flesh by stop sinning. Mm -hmm. Just because you stop sinning, don't get you out of the flesh. Go to every religion, they have stopped sinning. Yes. Yes. But they're still in the flesh because they have yet to receive the Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. Because you don't smoke cigarettes no more. Yes. Like, so what? I don't smoke cigarettes. Stopping sinning don't give you no credit. I don't fornicate no more. So what? You shouldn't have. Come on, I'm three, though. You want to help me get out of here? What? Just come on, help me. Set the kingdom here. Just because you stop sinning, don't mean you're in the spirit. That's right. That's right. That's the problem. Everybody think because I don't do that no more. So what? You don't do that no more. You're never supposed to do that. That's right. That's right. You want credit for doing what was right now. Come on. You're preaching. I'm trying to help you get out of this dilemma. Because all of the nations of the world, if you, if, you, if you check their score, they're winning. Most religious people are better than Christians in religion. But can none of them get in the spirit? Can none of them please God? They that are in the flesh cannot please God. And when you're in the flesh, you're following rules and regulations, thinking that doing what's right pleases God. No! God pleases God. I like my wife. Where's my wife at? Come here. This is my brain. And this is my brain on drugs. Come on. I got no toy. All right, now watch this. This is my wife. Now, look at my This is my wife. You know what I like about my wife? I put my wife through a lot. I practice this girl. No, no. It's supposed to be the nice one. Yes. Come on. What's that? The thing from Jaws? <laughs> I put this girl through some, some stuff. So she earned me. Now, if somebody put on her hair, her face, her body, her smile, I mean, I'm going to recognize the fake. Just because you can put the flesh on don't mean, don't mean it's the real deal. You know, people can fake Christianity, but God knows what you paid for. Yeah. Yeah. He knows three o'clock in the morning, this way was sweating. Yeah. The nine in the flesh was trying our best to get in the spirit. Yeah. He knows what you've been earning as far as a walk yeah. in the spirit. Yeah. Because you look like a Christian, you're not going to fake out God. Yeah. You look at my wife, you're going to fake me out. Because right. I go like this, boom. And you're going to jump. My wife will go like this, boom, back. Times. I like my new clock, but it's hurting my skin. Thank you, Lord. Galatians, right? Galatians 5 16 says this. Now, what do we say for so many, you know, somebody say, I gotta live in the spirit. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You have to walk. In the spirit, in order to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you do not walk in the spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh. Being normal, doing nothing, keeps you in the flesh. My analogy is a crude, carnal, and effective. Stand still and don't take a bath. You're going to see how you stink. Yeah. If you don't walk into that shower and scrub with soap and water, automatically you're going to start to stink. Yeah. Hear me, if you stop sinning, don't mean nothing. Yeah. 
You got to now walk in the spirit if you want to make sure that your, your flesh is actually dead. Amen. 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 Just because you didn't tell somebody off didn't mean you didn't want to. It don't mean if the conditions were better, you would have. Many of you would tell people off if you thought you could get away with it. Come on, don't you get tempted to give your boss a piece of your mind? You ain't got that much left. That's why most of you Christians are out of your mind. Somebody say, say I say, I need to walk in the spirit. And I need to live there. I mean, I have a wife and a daughter and a son. When I'm not home, they have a good time. For a certain amount of time. Then when I'm missing, they be like, where you at? When the last time you checked where the Holy Ghost was at in your life? You just been living without him and thinking everything is fine. You know, you're like, I'll pray tomorrow. That was six weeks ago. Wow. You didn't even check on him to see if he's home. Come on. Come on. Your body is supposed to be the temple of God. Yes. And the only way your body is the temple of God is if the Holy Ghost is in that temple. Yes. Yes. Never see these people talk about the body is a temple. You know, anybody in no temple, the body is a bag. Yes. <laughs> people live in bags. God lives in temples. If God's not in your bag, then your bag is not a temple. Right. Amen. 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 You know, you go to church all you want, I go to church. That's right. That's right. You can stop sitting all you want, I stop sitting. That's right. That's right. But if I don't get in the spirit yes. and walk in the spirit and live in the spirit, I will not kill my carnal nature and I will not be pleasing God. There's nothing wrong with smoking cigarettes if you don't, you know, unless you don't want to die early. That's right. You know, most people smoke because they want to die early. So they're not going to die early. You go to heaven quicker. Or your family and your kids be crying at your funeral early. There's nothing wrong with that. Just smoke and die early. Come on. Think about it. Right? I don't need no fornicate. Well, you know, you know, what's wrong with fornicate? Just because you got AIDS. What's the problem? Just die early. Come on. You go to heaven be with Jesus. Every sin leads to death, and you just get out of the earth quicker. Think about it the right way. They that are in the flesh die. I am almost I'm done and out of time. See now, everybody here. See those of you that don't sin no more. I'll start saying no more. I'll fucking no more. All that time you was in the spirit, though. Sucking your teeth when you don't get your way. That's the flesh. That's a 20th century complaint. Children of Israel destroy from. You ain't in the you're not in the spirit, you're still sucking your teeth. You ain't even eating. I can see me got some meat in your teeth. Y'all getting the point. I know I'm kind of humorous, but y'all getting the point? Now, can we start the close? Let me show you this. How do you get out of the flesh? You find them and kill them. Man, help me, Jesus. Jesus, you help me. Get me out of here. Play something. Play another college. Play a funeral number. Something. Anybody here, if you're married and you know, if you lose someone in your in your life, a spouse, right? The Bible says if your spouse dies, you are free from that marital obligation. You can marry another, right? If you do not kill your old nature, you're still stuck with them. You, you hear me? Your old nature is still much a part of your life. You must kill them. When you recognize the old you, it's like, you know, this is funny. I, I like to tease my wife. It's true. She likes not being teased, but I do it anyhow. I do panics on the way home. We stop at stores. <laughs> she tells me sometimes, who's talking, Mitch or Rich? 
Mitch must be the old me. This I say, and walk in the spirit, and you shall what? Not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be, here we go again, led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now you see what it says? It's not talking about the gifts of the spirit. Stop with your hikama shakas. You can pray in tongues all you want, and as soon as you stop, you want to jump on some animal. So the gifts of the Spirit are not going to get you out of the flesh. Look at somebody boldly and say, say the gifts, they're not going to get me out of the flesh. So you need to stop desiring gifts as if they're going to help you in your walk. Amen. The only gift that helps you in your walk is praying in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says pray in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. Now if your faith is not based on knowledge that walking in the Spirit is walking in the fruit, then you're just going to have faith to yourself. Paul said if I have faith in those mountains and have not love, it shall prosper me nothing. If I give my body to be burned and have not love, it shall profit me nothing. And love is not casual. Love is aggressive. People come to church talking about, I love you. You don't see no signs of it Monday. Monday is love's day off, I guess, in the church. Sunday, they love everybody. Oh, I love you, Sister Susie. Oh, you only see me every Sunday. That's why I love you. <laughs> You sit right there. And you don't move, you don't bother me or nothing. Come on. When, when the last time you loved somebody, you just got on with folk because it was convenient. Let somebody borrow $50 from you and don't pay you back and don't even say sorry. You know, all right, they start coming to me just like this. Your posture changing. <laughs> How did it get in your flesh? See, posturalization, the flesh, the nerve, the nerve. And what do you say? The nerve of you. You borrow fifty dollars, you won't pay me back. <laughs> then you start getting real legalistic. It's the principle. <laughs> You shouldn't have borrowed it. You shouldn't have lent it. <laughs> That's not right. Because by Jesus said, give, hope and nothing in return. Listen, right. somebody come up with that verse, you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> give a verse to somebody like that, they'd be like, did you see that? He's like, I'm just saying what Jesus said. <laughs> Jesus told you. That's right. Jesus told you don't don't be lending money over and stuff back. All right, let me go. Cause y'all playing like I stole three of your chicken sandwiches. Now, ready, look. Now, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are deeds. Now, these are the works of the flesh. The flesh meaning I got something to do. Anybody have a job? Amen. Come on, just to know. Let's see, all things ain't gonna be that high this week. <laughs> if you have a job, it's called work. Amen. Flesh has a job. Amen. I know I'm doing elementary, but y'all getting this, right? Yes. The works of the flesh, it's job. Yes. It has a job. Yes. Your flesh has a job. Amen. And if you see it working, fire it. Amen. Amen. So you don't want to be spiritual and heat from a shock all the time. Just fry that flesh. I want to have to smack my hand this time. I just want to smack my hand up. Fire that thy desire. Amen. Amen. Everybody make the church. I just want to tell them off. I just feel like telling them off. Don't fire that. That's you. Amen. Go pick them up if you want to be here on time. Wake them up an hour early. Are you coming to church on time tonight? Don't wait till they get in late to tell them all. Tell them 
walk by and still swing. Get them before they say. I'm out of time. You guys are cool. <laughs> no, I gotta go. Now the works of the flesh, the job of the flesh, are manifest, which are these: adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft. You witch. <laughs> Harry Potter witch. The <laughs> poor kids want to be little witches and warlocks. Stop down. Kids talk about, I wish I had a broomstick to fly around. Another one will be like, yeah, I would hit my mother with that broomstick. <laughs> little witch and warlocks. All right, stop. <laughs> Hatred. Little kid, I hate my mother. Variants. All right, never mind. Emulations. Well, I want to be like Mike. Stop emulating people. Yes. See, when you emulate to take their spot, it's a work of the flesh. Yes. Yes, amen. People want to act like Mother Edna because they say you're going to get a ride for Sister Janet. Because <laughs> they know people say they're going to take Mother Edna home. So they start coming in with an old lady hat on. They start walking like her and just get in front of her. And take it to come on, baby, I'll take you home. <laughs> and underneath, they're 15 years old. <laughs> come on. Emulation all throughout the flesh. Yeah. Trying to take somebody's spot. Oh. At work, they call it brown nosing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You thought you was ambitious. You ain't ambitious. Oh, no. You're trying to sneak up. Ooh. Oh, right. Yeah, boss, yeah, boss, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, boss, yeah, I'll be here early. Yeah, me yeah. Yeah. They won't come, I'll be here. Come on, Pastor Rich, you gotta stop. Wrath. Yeah. 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 I ain't gonna take you all my day. Come, you know, with the strife. Yeah. Seditions, yeah. heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. <laughs> what else? In such like of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't have to tell you about those things. You have stopped doing them. Amen. Amen. You should have gave them a note of hope. Because yes. some of you know you still got murder in your heart. Do something. <laughs> I'm going to You know they got those, those music cards. Come on, hit a button. For real, play something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They be listening to my message. People are always in the party talking about me. <laughs> Y'all get the point? Yeah. This is the works of the flesh. This is the flesh's job. If you do any of these things, you're dying. You're dying. You can ask for forgiveness all you want, but you're still dying. <laughs> it's like a gangster. Like that analogy. Go, you have to play some. Do something. Do something. <laughs> My wife, her father. This is this is an analogy. Her father's a, a mobster, a real gangster. You know, likes me. I'm a good boy. Good boy. Just don't do nothing to my daughter. Good boy. You want to live? Good boy. Treat my daughter right. And I have a, a lapse of memory about her father, and I just commit adultery against her. And if the father finds out, he says, "You was a good boy. He was a good boy." And I'm not going to tell my daughter how I killed you, but you was a good boy. <laughs> we get in the flesh, and we're going to ask for forgiveness, and think, I can just shake myself, I'm Samson. <laughs> but you didn't, Samson didn't know the spirit departed. Yeah. And when the spirit leaves you, you can stop sinning, but you're still going down. Yeah. Absence of sin in your life don't mean you're in the spirit. Wow. You know me. I come to church all the time, all the time. Yeah. But do you bring church with you? Yes. Do you bring the spirit of God when you show up? Yes. That's your job. Yes. 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 You ever remember the movie with Superman? When Lois Lane died? Remember that? What did he do? He spread around and get the time to come back. So I'm spinning around because I lost time. <laughs> I 
Can I get a minute from somebody? Now look at this. But the fruit of the Spirit, yes. the work of the Spirit, yes. is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, yes. gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. The verse 25 is where we need to look at. I really want to try to close, but I can't close today. It's like doing a search. I got you open. You're still on the table, and I had to go out for a minute. I got to come back and show you up. Verse 25 says, this, this is one of the keys. Somebody say, I must be in the Spirit. Come on, say that to me. I have to get in the Spirit. It says this, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. He made it very clear. If you're going to say you're born again, if you're going to say you're a child of God, if you're going to say you live in the Spirit, you must walk in the spirit you cannot have momentary laughs of whatever you have that thing you have to live and walk in the spirit and you're not going to live and walk in the spirit by yourself you have to be around mean and nasty people to do it you can't Go on a fast, on a sabbatical to be living in the spirit. You have to be around sinners. You have to be around people that get on your nerve in order for you to exercise a walk in the spirit. Many of you separate yourselves from people. You don't want to be bothered with the church. You don't want to be bothered with them. You're not in the spirit. You're in, you're in hermitity. That's a word I made up Hermity. You're a hermit. You might as well get a shout and call yourself a hermit crab. You need to be actively engaged in bad people's lives in order for you to exercise a walk in the spirit. You can't just hang around Christians and think that you're walking in the spirit. Christians don't test you. You get around some bad Christians, they will test you. How much of that are you going to eat? I'm just going to eat it all. You're not going to offer me any? No. That's going to test your, your, your walk in the spirit. I got to close. First Corinthians 2.14 says this, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Go there. First Corinthians chapter 2. That's what I'm going to close. But I'm, I'm, I need to read this last thing before I close. First John 4, one says this, Beloved, believe not every one. Come on, have me three of them. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I am out of time, but I still have to tell you this. If you don't know how to get in the spirit, you'll never know how to try them. Amen. Amen. Most science teachers do not check your math tests. You need a math teacher to try your math test. Amen. If you're not going to get in the spirit, you'll never be able to try the spirits. Amen. That's why there's so many Christian cults out there. Because none of them are in the spirit to know that it was not the spirit of God. Amen. That even uses the Bible Amen. to get that group in order. Amen. You got organizations that call themselves Christians and don't even have communion. Yes. How can they get away with it? No one has the spirit. So they don't have to try the spirit that's operating. Yes. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3 says this, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'm getting more excited than y'all. I'll say it one more time. Many people will give heed to what? Seducing what? Not people. Seducing what? Spirits. And doctrines of devils. 
There are messages being preached that the devil has released. And without being in the spirit of God, you didn't even know that was not God. And it's that seducing spirits. That means that spirits prepare you to believe lies. I'll do this next week. Jesus took on flesh and blood. He did not take on the nature of angels. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he took on flesh and blood so that he could be just like his brothers. He said, I want to, I want to show them that they can have victory with a bag on their back. Now, anybody here that used to know how to fight? Right? If you were really good at fighting, you would say what I used to say. I could beat you with one hand tied behind my back. I'm here to tell you, with the Holy Ghost in you, you can beat him in the world with all this flesh still attached to your back. Only three people are still with me. You know, when in, in Rome, when they used to torture people, when they really wanted to torture you, what they would do is this. They would tie a dead corpse to your body. And the rigor mortis from the dead corpse would seep into your living body. It's terrible, isn't it? Come on. Some of you need to drop that dead corpse, that dead corpse off of you. Because that dead corpse that you're allowing to activate, sit in your life, is seeping rigor mortis into your, your spirit. That's why you can't even fast. When you think of fast, you think of fast food. I'm out of here. Can we close? Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 2. What verse did I say? Verse 14. Y'all with me? And this is how we're going to close. Somebody said we're going to close here. But I need you to be a little bolder because right now y'all look like I'm having all the car and have your flesh come. I don't even ready none of your flesh. I'm going to give you your own flesh. You should have thought about that before you came to church. <laughs> Just joke. We're going to help you. Look what it says. The natural man cannot what? Come on, what is it saying? Don't get no. Nobody has the Bible? Verse 14. Let's read it together. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It's foolish for somebody to smack you and you say it's all right. When you got to get people back, you need to understand I am not in the spirit. When you got to tell people off that did you wrong, you need to admit, listen, I am not in the spirit. See, many of you want to fake like you're Christians. You want to fake like you're saved because you go to church every day. You you dot your eyes and you cross your teeth, but when the, the rubber hits the road, when nobody's around, you flesh out just like a regular devil. Amen. Amen. You're not fooling anybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna wake up. I'm almost done. Yes. But he that is spiritual judges what? All things. Yet, he himself is what? Judged of no man. Judged of no man. Yes. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? For we have the mind of Christ. Stay with me. Y'all look at me and watch this. Because I'm done. If it was Thanksgiving, I would be the turkey and I would tell you to stick a fork in it. Look what it says. It says, they that are spiritual judge everything. Amen. Hallelujah. So you get up in your flesh and you start saying, I can tell you when you're, when you're in the flesh. You say statements like this. This is the catch-all phrase of a weak Christian. 
And you're going to be mad at me when I say this. This is what we Christians say. I don't want to judge nobody. The moment a person says to me, I don't want to judge nobody, is the moment that person says, I'm in sin myself. Jesus said, he never without sin, cast the first stone. But my Bible says, hey, which are spiritual, judge of all things. You can I don't want to break this new public. You cannot be afraid to judge. Come on now. Come on now. You was, you was with me. Get back with me. If you're going to walk in the spirit, you're going to judge everything and everybody all the time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Why, is this, why does this not set right with you because it doesn't set right with the devil? Because the prince of this world is judged. And he knows it. They which are spiritual judge him all things, yet they themselves cannot be judged. When I'm in the spirit, there is nothing you can say about me. If I give my life to God, and I give my body to burn, and I have love, what can you say against me? you and I are supposed to have where we can judge everybody and everything and not be judged. I'm preaching better than you shouting. See, we want to we wanna live in the flesh. So we say, I don't want to judge nobody. That's a sign. There's something in your life that's not right. But I'm here to tell you, God by a sovereign act of his will erase your past no matter what sin you came in here with you're not going out with it God's going to make a people in this place today a holy people a people not afraid to judge what's right and what's wrong a people that are walking in the spirit of God come on stand to your feet Judge nobody. That's a sign you haven't been in the spirit. The moment you get in the spirit, you see everything right and everything wrong. This mother just beat her child. And then you sit with the guidance counselor. Well, why did you beat your child? Well, my child hit me. What did you hit your mother for? Well, she spit in my face, took my money, told me I was the devil, and then she started choking me, so I hit her back in the face. Won't the judgment change? Come on. You and I can no longer stay in the flesh and expect the promises of God to just jump on us. Stay in your life. Now, can 
we get bold in here today? I'm talking about really got to be bold. I'm talking about a faith walk that's going to change your life. I'm talking about there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that walk not after the flesh, but are walking according to the spirit. I'm talking about doing something bold, radical, that's going to scare the hell out of your flesh. You ready for it? Yes. You're going to come to this altar. Yes. Only if you know you're guilty. Hallelujah. And you don't want to stay that way. Hallelujah. But before you get to the altar, hey. you're going to say to yourself, I don't need that altar. I'm going to talk to God right where I'm at. Yeah. Come on, help me. Get out of here. Your heart. We got 13 seconds to get right with God, then we will start to celebrate. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know your sin. You know the flesh you've been staying in. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to judge. We don't have to be weak anymore. We can be holy. We can be upright with God. Now the radical part. Get out your seat and boldly go to four people, look them in the eye, and say, I am the most righteous person you will ever see. Look them in the eye and tell them. And I am holy. And I'm upright. And I'm free. Tell somebody, I'm the most righteous, most holy, and I'm walking the right that you'll ever see. Don't smile, boldly look at their face and say, I'm the most righteous, most holy person you ever seen. And then tell them I'm going to stay that way. If that's your confession, you believe in me.